good, enjoying this nice weather. We're gonna get started today with a special song from Cora. Let's go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Great job, Cora. I just love that song so much, so much. I think we're going to have Adelaide and Avalyn sing it for us one more time. Let's go. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones do him be one. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good job, girls. Great job. Now, everybody get cozy. Because our friend, Miss Sherry Schwong, is going to give us a Bible lesson. So let's snuggle in. Mm -mm -mm. Snuggle time. Time to listen. Hola. Ciao. Bonjour. Ni hao. Konnichiwa. And for Grady and Wyatt. Annyeonghaseyo. Ne idemi Sherry Chuang Imnida. And hello, I'm Miss Sherry, and I hope that you understood all of those different ways of saying hello. Those are those were said in Spanish, in um, French, in Chinese, and in Korean. So those are different languages that I wanted to say hello. I am glad to see you and glad to be here today with you to tell you a story from the Bible about the Tower of Babel. So I wanted to tell you in the Bible, in Genesis, it talks about Noah. And you guys all know the story about Noah and the flood. Well, after the flood, God told Noah, you know what, Noah, I want you to go and your family to spread out and go to different places. He's, he told him to multiply, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. That meant, Noah, you're going to have a lot of kids and a lot of grandkids and a lot of great grandkids because they needed to build back up people in the world. So then a few chapters later in Genesis 11, we read that the people traveled to the east and they came to the land of Shinar and they lived there. Well, you know, at this time, they all could talk to each other. They worked together. And I really think they liked living close together. So they decided that they were going to build a big tower in this city and make this a huge, huge city. So I'm going to read to you a little bit about it. And I'm also going to hold my iPad up and show you some pictures. So hopefully you'll be able to see that. Okay. So it says, then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them. So sometime bricks can be baked. Hopefully you can see that. And it says they had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. So the mortar is what goes between the bricks to hold them together. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves because they thought if they could build a tower all the way to heaven, it would be pretty important and people all over would know about them. So well, here is a picture of a tower that looks pretty big. And then the tower that they wanted to make 
I wanted to go all the way into heaven. So they said, let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll just be scattered all over the face of the whole earth. But remember, what did God tell Noah? He wanted his people to go and scatter. And so I think that one of the lessons we're going to learn from this is that it's really important to obey God. And when people don't obey God, there's usually a consequence. So let's see what happens. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, hmm, indeed, the people are one. And they all have one language so they could understand each other and talk and work together. And they really enjoyed living together, I'm sure. But then he said, come, let us go down and confuse their language. Then they can't understand each other's speech. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I first started talking this morning, I don't think you knew what I was saying. You might have recognized one or two of the things that I said, but I bet there was at least one or two that you didn't know. And you thought, who is she talking to? And what is she saying? So when God came down and saw them building this, he said, I'm going to confuse them. So he made them speak different languages. So now when they started talking to each other, they just showed up at work and they one person started giving another person directions on how to build. And he was like, what are you saying? I don't understand you. What? What? I, I don't. What are you saying? And then somebody else would say something. What are they saying? So this is the first place in the Bible that we hear and we read about people having different languages. So you know what this forced the people to do? They ended up having to scatter. They had to scatter all over the, the land and they had to build up other parts of the, of the country. Now, remember, what was God's plan all along? He said, go out into the earth and multiply and, and fill the earth. So here's the thing. When God has a plan, he will always make sure that the plan happens. And God also wants us to obey. And if, if we don't obey, that there will be consequences. I want to show you one more little slide. So Babel. So the Tower of Babel, if you can see this, Babel means confusing. It means a confusing noise made by a lot of voices. And you see the little picture of the baby who's saying, uh, what did you just say to me? What did you say to me? Because I'm sure he just kind of went, what? All of these people thought, what? So I want us to remember that God loves us and God has a plan for us and he wants us to obey. So let's say a prayer now. Ready? Finger friends are up. Finger friends are up. Finger friends are down. Finger friends are dancing, dancing all around. You got to dance them on your shoulder. Dance them on your head. Dance them on your knees. Then we tuck them into bed. Bow your head with me. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today to be able to learn about you even when we're not together. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for having a plan for us. And thank you for always making sure your plan happens and happens for us and with us in it. Thank you for our families. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Miss Sherry. We are just so looking forward to seeing everybody back at church. But until then, say your prayers, wash your hands, and trust God. Bye-bye.